and welcome everybody here on Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this one later on for some Kalia and friends in Ranked. This is going to kick off our Rank Up Sunday stream. As you all know, that's what we like to do here on Sundays is play some different decks that we've had success with over the past week or so and try them over in Rank and see how much we can rank up with some of my favorite decks. So we're starting with Kalia and Friends. Now this deck was one that I wasn't expecting a ton from whenever we played it um, last Tuesday, I believe, um, during our 12-hour stream. I guess that was Wednesday, so last Wednesday during our 12-hour stream. And we went 5-0 with this deck, um, and it felt really good. Now, a couple of things. Um, I did have some some easier pairings, like two of the matches, two of the five were against like beginner decks here. So, you know, so I had some easier pairings. And then also I I was like um, curving out basically every game, every match, like always hit our fourth land drop, always had like things to play. So like it, it went really well for us. Um, so will that happen again here? Maybe not, maybe not. But I wanted to try this one out over in ranked just because Kalia is just such a sweet card you know like it's just a really cool card um, it has an awesome animation um, playing it and a bunch of angels is really cool will this deck be super successful you know skeptical uh, you know that's that uh, will be seen but I don't know if it felt good the other day when we played it so let's give it another try um since last time I added a Blood Sun to the sideboard, just because of how popular Scapeshift is. So let's get a third one of those in here. And, well, honestly, we may need to go towards a fourth, to be honest. But we'll see how three does for us. And got to command the Dread Horde in here for, like, the Esper matchup. So I think Esper Control, uh, a deck with, like, a lot of Kaya's Wrath, is going to be something that this kind of deck's going to struggle with when you're playing cards like Aurelia, Shalai, Lyra. Like, those cards are just resplendent angel see like these are just a bunch of expensive creatures that don't have etb effects that get that uh die to sweepers very easily and that's going to be a tougher matchup for us so got an extra command the dread horde to see if that helps that kind of match up there um all right so that's this is our deck we're going to play some matches here in rank today. We have one donation deck to do here with the Selesnia mid-range, but besides that, um, playing some decks over in ranked and uh, seeing how we do for our rank up Sunday stream. <laughs> yeah. You know, Kali is not an angel. I guess, I, yeah, I don't have like any great explanation, but I guess they didn't want you to be able to chain Kalias together. I don't know. I don't think we're playing a deck that mulligans very well. One. And two, we're playing a deck where... The reason why it doesn't mulligan well, I guess to explain that, is because we don't have... We don't really have card advantage with this deck. Like We don't have cards that are drawing a whole lot. You know, we, don't have, we don't have acceleration through our deck. So, like, this is the kind of deck that we want all the possible cards that we can. So, keeping sevens is going to be more valuable here with this deck than normal. And... Sorry, and uh, you know, being able to hit land drops is something that's pretty valuable with this deck too, because we have a lot more expensive cards.
So if I have Soren bring back Embodiment of Agonies, um, which the Embodiment of Agonies has Death Touch, by the way. That's why it killed that thing. If I go Soren minus three... They can still kill Soren pretty easily, but I think it's I think it's worth it than just plus twoing. I require your body, not your soul. Wait, why does it have two counters on it? Did it count itself? I guess it count counted itself. So yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I guess it, it counts itself when you reanimate it, huh? I have I haven't done the Ixalan event yet, no. But there you go. You got a Niv. You played a Niv Mizzet Perun deck. There you go. Niv Mizzet's pretty sweet. Um. What's the worst? All right. So like, let's say they they draw removal for Shalai. They're hitting me for four, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I would go down to three if I attack with this Lyra. I like to draw a Splendid Angel deck. Splendid Angel would be nice. So it's better to attack with Shalai because the Lyra has Hexproof. So Lyra is just a really good blocker with, with having Hexproof and everything. Couple bricks in a row for us isn't helping. Yeah, we could certainly be dead. Yeah, if my opponent plays things that kill me, we could certainly be dead. Oh, this is just lethal, isn't it? Hmm. If I block the Sanctum Seeker, is lethal. I guess I gotta block this thing. Alright, so that's four, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven, twelve. So I stay alive here. Good play. So we came close. Needed to draw stuff the last two turns and not nothing. All right, more Clarion. Like, is, is Tithe Taker the card I'm taking out? Unfortunately, Angrass Rampage just really isn't that good. Maybe we need to redo, like, some of the removal in this deck to help out with this matchup. 
But like these cards here, Gideon Duress, Noxious Grass, Command the Dread Horde, Blood Sun, Chandra, the, none of these cards are ones that I want. I guess to Spark, can't get rid of Sanctum Seeker and Champion, I suppose. Hey, yes, let's go with the sub. Thank you very much there. <laughs> That's a sweet username. Yes, let's go. You went 6 0 with Jun Dinos in the Ixalan event? Awesome. Good job, track team. I haven't done that event yet. Hey, Roby Game. Clarion, deafening Clarion. Hmm. This is a mulligan. Seriously, the same hand. <laughs> not what I want. I guess I'm not going to go down to five. I guess I'll keep this. I suppose. We Clarion. <laughs> yeah, this song is perfect for Deafening Clarion. All right, we're we're kind of doing it. All right, Kali animation. That was pretty sweet. What's the best deck to make when you start Arena is the question. And there's not, like, there's really not just, like, an easy answer to that, honestly. It's the thing about Magic. It's not, there's not really, like, a, a one-deck-fits-all kind of thing. You can play, you can play anything, really, you know? You can play whatever, whatever you like. So yeah, some people like control, some people like aggro, some people like mid range. You know, like you can you can kind of put together whatever whatever deck you really that you really want to. All right, wouldn't mind drawing a land here. Cast town's not bad. All right, game three. All 
I did take out a lead. Like I used to, like last time I had a Legion's End in the sideboard, and I took that out to get this third Blood Sun in here, and I, I am regretting that. Currently with this matchup. Okay. We'll see how good Clarion is here. This isn't the best hand against um, Adanto Vanguard, so hoping for... That's that's not a good sign. No shock there. I was hoping for a lot of one-drops kind of thing. Things that are not Adanto Vanguard. All right, good sign. No Vanguard. It's good. Cool. I really don't mind Bishop of Wings eating like those removal spells. Bishop of Wings is not even that good of a card. That card's bad for me. I guess you do. All right, got to hit our land drops. My bloodline flows through. The opponent has like the the really good hand against Clarion, <laughs> big creatures and Soren. They have their anti Clarion hand when I have Clarions. Uh, no, Dinos probably won't be a thing post rotation, too much. Hey, Koa. Come on. Uh, we didn't hit land drop. They have. They now have a Danto Vanguard. After turn two, I was liking where we were at, but this has gone as bad as it possibly could since turn two. This is but a taste of my power. <laughs> Five lands. Uh, so this is what I was talking about with our, our deck, how it's usually good to keep sevens and stuff when you have a good amount of lands. So I kept that first seven with five lands because we need to hit our land drops in this deck. This is not a deck that can survive on three lands with all of the four and five mana cards in here. How those how those six cards lined up, like whenever you look at them with Akalia, doesn't tell you what order that doesn't tell you what order they were on top of your library. It always puts the target that you have that you can take to the front. So it doesn't that doesn't mean that I was drawing that uh, angel and then having five lands after that. Yeah, well, the, the donation deck I have to do second today, green. That's where it was scheduled to, to be second. But I could play Teamer Extinction third. But I think that... I think uh, splitting, like putting Selesnya and Grixis next to each other is good just for color pie-wise. All right, this hand is pretty bad. Could have just kept it though. Looks like I should have. There we go. All right, so we need lots of lands.
Pretty sure it's just Clarion. Like, I think I just want to keep four lands. Um... I just want to keep the lands. Because we're going to draw spells like this that we got to be able to cast. Lands are good. I am really glad we kept the four lands. <laughs> we drawn spell, spell, spell. I don't think my opponent realized that Embodiment of Agonies has death touch. Yeah, the last the last two days Deckmaster hasn't been working and it doesn't look like it's working again today. Doom Whisperer is a lot better against Chandra if their their next turn is Chandra, their next play is Chandra. I know who I am, and no one is telling me what to do. Hope it's not too. All right, so we're gonna have an emblem. Can't pay too much life. Still have Shalai to play next turn. So we have Soren and Lyra. That would be good draws to gain life. Here. Just going to go to my turn, though. For right now. It's not a bad one. So playing Shalai first to give the Seraph hex proof so we we know that like one creature will kill the Chandra. Good. Yeah, sorry, Onimusha. It doesn't look like Deckmaster's working. All right. The old Mulda 5. London Mulligan rule, pretty good. 
Obviously, we drew very well. Also, but... Hey, Thoral. All right, cast downs out, Clarion out, Bishop of Wings out, Legion's End out. This gets us down to 62. All right, what else are we taking out? Probably Aurelia. I guess we did see... We were playing that Lich. I still have some removal, though. Don't think we need to play Cast Down. Um, Aurelia, Resplendent Angel. Like, Resplendent Angel dies to a lot of their removal. Tyrant Scorn. And uh, things like that. Ritual of Soot. Where Aurelia doesn't. But I'm bringing in two sixes. Let's cut a couple fours. All right, let's try this. Um. All right, so keeping five lands. And kind of a broken record, but lands are very important with this deck. It's a good one. Um, yeah, I haven't I haven't looked into cardboard live at all. I don't it's not like I have anything against cardboard live, I just haven't you know, Deckmaster is almost you know, almost always worked. Just the last couple of days it hasn't. Hey, Cranky. Yeah, cool. Did you like that deck? Yeah, that that's one I've been I was trying out. Um, I have come for vengeance. Yeah, I was playing a, a Simic extra turn deck. And it felt pretty good. It, it honestly did feel really good. I demand servitude. Darn. Well, Gideon is better than Aurelia in this matchup. Having Aurelia would have been better in this specific instance because we would have been able to grab Aurelia with Kalia here. That's all right. Soren still traded for two removal spells. I will take that, especially with this Doom Whisperer chilling here. More threats. I don't want to go down too much on life, considering we have Command the Dread Horde. So that's one reason why I'm um, valuing the Dawnbringer kind of highly here. <laughs> Called Doom Whispers, Mr. Tickles. Well, that was the worst case scenario, especially with dipping, ditching, sorry, ditching the rampage. All right, these are good cards. We'll use Hellkite to kill that thing. Your existence is pointless. Happen for you. <laughs> Does look like Mr. Tickles. I train ever thoughtfulness before action. Oh. 
I won't forget our time together. Oh, thanks, Frankie. All right, one and one. There we go, Kalia and friends coming through. This deck does match up very well against black removal spells because a lot of the black removal spells people are playing are like Legion's End, Cast Down, Ritual of Set, you know, like that kind of those kind of things. We get a Troll Bread Guardian, got a thousand XP, and we get a Mastery Orb. No, I can't get Kalia yet. Uh, so close. All right, Dracu Seth. Because you have to get this one first, and then you can get that once you have those. So I'm going to get, like, repeated reverberation next, then Kalia, then go over here and finish this out, pull some Rasa, shared summons, and then Omnath. And then we'll work on the last color of white over there. All right, one on one. Yeah, the the art for a lot of these angel cards is just really really good too. It's this is a pretty fun deck to play. Uh, what do we lose to? We lost to uh, vampires. This is a this is a good match. We you know played three games, but we lost. Yeah, that's the thing with, with the Kalia deck, there is a lot of rotating parts. Like, there's a lot of cards that are rotating from it. So, yeah, like, taking out, like, Resplendent Angel from this deck certainly weakens it a lot. Um, you could play... You could play Angel of Vitality and Embodiment of Agonies. You could play more of those cards. They're going to be worse, of course, but um, those are options. Sacrifice a creature, because obviously we're just going to be tapping out here for a while, like, you know, Resplendent, Shalai, the next couple of turns, if Shalai gets countered, another one. That's unfortunate that I get Spell Pierced. I would much prefer a counter spell that can target a creature to be able to, to be used there. So Spell Pierce is kind of, that's bad for us to see, because Spell Pierce would have been just a dead card besides that. I guess I could play the Clarion. Sure. Resplendent's not like that great on turn three anyway. All right, then we'll go Shalai, Shalai, Resplendent. Because Re Resplendent is definitely a card you want to resolve. You want it... Um, you want it in the late game because... Once Resplendent Angel's on the battlefield, you just don't have to do it. You don't have to play anything else. So, like, it's Resplendent Angel is the most important card for us to resolve. So, that's why I didn't really want to play it on turn three and just play the Clarion to kill a 1 1 instead. Hey, Abigail. Darn. I was hoping they were going to counter that. Because if they countered that, then I would have played Resplend you know, I would have played Resplendent Angel, but they didn't counter it. Ooh. 
No counterspell. Yeah, I know, Kitty. Resplendent Angel. I'd much rather have Resplendent Angel on the battlefield than July. It could just be sitting with negates, spell pierces, that kind of stuff. Uh, let's give this a try. Resolve, 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 resolve. No, oh, I could have played around Lookout's Dispersal, and I didn't. I didn't consider that. Darn. Well, that hurts. <laughs> no, Dak, help me out. I need spells. Finally just had Resplendent Angel in play. This one would have been over, but I don't. Went to the finals today of a PCQ with Azorius Control and Modern. Lost in the finals, but opened a foil Japanese alternative to Fairy. That's a good open right there. Very nice. Good job, Aduriel. I don't know if I'm supposed to block with Shalai or not. you got to be kidding me. Well, that game was miserable. Not sure what I want to take out, honestly. So Shalai doesn't match up against Tempest Jin, which is why I'm trimming one of those. Trimming Akalia because I uh, have a little bit less angels in there. Bishop of Wings can play a little defense, but it's not that great of a card. Embodiment of Agonies and uh, Seraph of the Scales. Can struggle against Merfolk Trickster.
<clears throat> Alright, we're gonna go with like Doom Whisper next turn. And then we'll have double Clarion. I guess I could go Embodiment of Agonies. Here. It's worse against Trickster. Cool. Makes them use that trickster main phase though. We'll, so we'll see if they have two counter spells with their three mana. Hopefully not. They have zero counter spells. All right, that worked. Now can we beat those four cards in hand? Commander's a good one. Hmm. Okay, Doom Whisper is in. We're down to 11, though. I'm still playing defense. I'm going to be able to activate Doom Whisper again. Hmm. If they have removal, that could be tough. Hey, 619. Really wouldn't mind a Lyra. Soren good. Soren good. Yay. All right, game three. There you go. Went with the teamer elementals. You just you had turn two Nissa all six games. <laughs> For that uh, 
event. There you go, 6-0. Pretty good, pretty good. Pretty good. What's up, Zerf? Happy Sunday. We're having some fun here with our Kalia deck. And I'll admit my I'll admit this deck's not it's not like one of the best in the format, I'll admit, but we're having fun with it and we're we're definitely competitive. Even if we lose this, you know, like we'll be one and two, and we'll lose both of our matches in game three. If if we lose this, could of course just win also. Um, not not really. The deck the deck could definitely have more early interaction. It'd certainly be beneficial to have more early interaction. Thing is, is our hardest matchups are probably like the like the control deck with lots of wraths and and scape shift. And so you see, most of my sideboard is for those two matchups, and. That does leave us a little vulnerable here. Pirates beating us down. So I'm doing this because Getting that Siren Storm Teamer out of here turns off their two mana creature counters besides Essence Scatter. But, you know, like now the Wizards Retort, the two that we've seen, we've seen Wizards Retort and the Pirate counter. And now they can't counter with either of those. They don't have a Pirate or a Wizard. So doing that, I'm, I'm hoping they just don't have a counter spell now. Now Hellkite can mow down some creatures for us. Boom. Do you think it's possible to get to a high rank with a homebrew deck? Absolutely. That's what I do every season. Absolutely. It takes, um, you know, if you like, you're making your own deck and, and everything, and uh, 
trying to get to like a high high rank with it it takes um patience and uh you know like you're you're probably going to pick up your losses but just try to learn from them and try to you know focus on always continually upgrading your deck and focus on what your opponents are doing to beat you and and how you can um how you can uh try to fortify any holes that your deck has and try to expose weaknesses of other decks and it it takes time but certainly possible do you like lots of lands it's one too many though even for me All right, vampires are back. This is what we lost to before. It would be a really good turn to draw a white source. So we can just curve Resplendent Angel into these four drops. Good hand. Well, they just paid four life for nothing. Just showing off, paying four life for nothing. They did not pay four life for a pump because the I already lost four life that turn. They were gonna get the pump anyway. So far, so good. I did not stop this fight, but I will finish it. That's Yeah, um, as far as, yeah, for the treasure event, I haven't, I haven't done it myself, but it seems like you want to probably have something with big mana. Uh, different people in here have said they've d done well with, like, Niv-Mizza, Perun, um, Teamer Elementals. Yeah, my opponent already did four damage to me that turn. So whenever they paid four life for the Knight of the Ebon Legion, it didn't didn't end up doing anything. <clears throat> Drag team went 10-0 with Jun, Jun Dinos. It's definitely unfortunate with this other Legion Lieutenant. Because now I don't get to profitably block the first one. A reckoning will come one day.
don't think I can actually attack because if they kill Shalai, I'm in real trouble. Yeah, new Karn does shut off the opposing treasures. Yep, and we cast really early. Yeah, you can cast it on turn two. That's that's a good good call there. I don't know if I'm supposed to keep this Legion's End or not. So let's see, I go to nine, get another blocker. I'll go to seven. Put me down to one. Um. Just if my opponent has anything, I'm pretty dead. I mean, I could do the Legion's End play. I guess that's the safest. But this, this kills them if they draw a blank. They draw a land, I win. I'm going for that. Like if they don't draw, like they have to draw like removal or Soren or Legion's Lieutenant. That's kind of about it. So they have to draw one of those, otherwise they lose. I guess it's not lose-lose. Is it? That's a good attack for me. Darn. I guess it wasn't lose lose. Never mind. I wasn't gonna be able to keep one of those angels alive. No, our creature doesn't have first strike. If we would have blocked the Legion Lieutenant, we would have taken eight from the Vanguards. Damage happens at the same time. So, like, the Vanguards were four twos, we would have taken eight. If we would have blocked Legion's Lieutenant. And I couldn't just block um, the two Vanguards and then take six from the others because, of course, the, the other creature can pump. Untapped Black Source was a really good draw for us there, admittedly.
All I did last time was bring in the Clarions and cut a couple Tithe Takers. The Tithe Taker was really nice at slowing our opponent down, though, especially with Soren. Bringing it back. There's not any specific. There's not any deck that has no cards that wrote that don't rotate. But I want to cut an Aurelia and a Tithe Taker. But um, probably be looking towards like a, a blue green deck, like a you know blue green ramp kind of deck as far as um, a deck to craft where most everything doesn't rotate. Next week, which you know starts tomorrow, I am, I am planning on spending time and building rotation-proof decks. Like That's what I'm going to be doing next week is I'm going to have ro rotation-proof decks. And so we'll we'll see how they they work out and everything. Uh, Blood Sun is miles better than Alpine Moon. Turning off all of the lands instead of turning off one land is a lot more valuable. And it draws a card. But yeah, if the only the only reason to play Alpine Moon instead of Blood Sun is if you have Alpine Moon in your account and you don't want to craft Blood Sun, and you're willing to play a worse card. That's a good fast start. I don't, I don't know, Magnificent, I don't know exactly how much decks cost, honestly. I don't know, like, exact prices or anything. The The ballpark number that was that's always been told to me, um, as far as that's concerned, is... Um, $100 for a deck, like getting the $100 gem pack. Usually you can open enough packs and then have wild cards for, for one of the, the decks. Um, I don't know if that works for every deck or not. Yeah, I guess it would certainly matter how many rares and mythics the deck's playing. That's the ballpark number I've, I've always been told. Mm -hmm. All right, didn't quite get there. Too fast of a start for our opponent, and too slow of a start for us without having any shock lands. That happens. Kind of want this tithe taker in here. I'll play it over a Kalia.
Yep, all check lands with no shocks. That is, it's always a little frustrating when that happens, but it happens. Now we get to be on the play for game three, which is always nice. So let's see how this goes. All right, good hand. Got some shocks. We'll start with our Temple of Scryumph. So we get to scry one. All right, Temple of Scryumph. I think I want to keep this. Yeah, with Resplendent, yeah, we'll just keep the land. All right, I'd like to draw a spell. We scry the land at the top. Immediately had another land, of course, but hopefully not two lands. Could take the one. Let's get a spell. Darn. Um, if they... So this works out. I guess Noxious Grasp, it doesn't work out nearly as well. Will have revenge for House this is fine against Cast Down and Mortify, but not against Noxious Grasp. Ugh. All short lives. And of course they had Noxious Grasp. Depart Innistrad immediately. Against Noxious Grass, the better play is just to attack first. They grasp my angel, and then I uh, play Soren and bring the angel back. That's my better play there. Attack with just the angel, not not attacking with Tithe Taker. It's going to be tough to win now. We don't draw. Don't draw our mythics. Okay. So this makes a body man in agonies a four four instead of a three three. So it doesn't die to Soren. Man, we would have been doing great if my opponent didn't specifically have Noxious Grasp earlier. I bestow a mighty curse. Vengeance will come for you one day. Mm. Getting punished for keeping that land on top, of course, because there's just been a bunch of lands after that. We've drawn three lands and an embodiment. Take four, go down to ten. Ugh. 
Um, no, I haven't. I haven't made a smothering tithe emergency powers deck. Yeah, I wish I could stop drawing lands, especially just red white ones. Thankfully, our opponent's also flooded out. Come on. We have so many good cards to draw. Like, so, so much of our deck are like three, four, five drops that are, would all be awesome draws. This is the exact kind of game we want to try to get into. Oh no. Okay, there we go. It's a good one. Mm. Obviously, we have to be worried about Sanctum Seeker killing us. I was certainly wondering if I was going to regret not blocking that Sanctum Seeker. I'm not sure. This embodiment of Agonies has been really good for us. So we're down to seven. One more. Gotta find lifelink. Okay. Do Bishop, then shall I. Gains me four life. Gosh, that's still just not so not good. Oh, crap. Vicious Conquistador. I forgot about Conquistador. Um, was this huge, huge problems? I need Soren. Gosh, I just forgot about Conquistador. Clarion, Soren. Ooh. Barely. That was close. Oh, that was close. That was basically our only draw. Yeah, because Clarion wasn't going to be good enough. That was basically the only draw in the whole deck, the one Soren that was going to be good enough to stabilize here after going down to one. The good old one out of 36 shot. Did they draw? Certainly hope they didn't draw Soren. 
Soren, of course, kills me. Hooray! No Soren. We draw Soren. They don't. Wow. <laughs> well, yesterday everything that could go wrong for us went wrong. Now today we are getting lucky and things are going, breaking our way. Got a booster pack. Oh no, I'm out of rares. Oh no, I'm out of M20 rares. So now all the rares will be gems. For each pack that we get. Hmm. All right, one more match here with Kalia. I usually play five matches here with the rank decks. Ooh. Yeah. Doom Whisper to the rescue there. See, I have been very impressed by this card so far, though. The, it's all about the Death Touch. The Death Touch has just been incredible for us. Well, we, looks like we're not getting the Scape Shift matchup. Sorry. No, you're waiting for the Scape Shift matchup. Well, looks like we're not getting it. We got Jund Dinos. Jund Dinos is usually built around their two drops. Um, so Legion's End's pretty nice here. Yeah, because they usually have Raptor or I don't know, the other one too that gives them haste. Oh, a bunch more raptors. Raptors? Yeah! So they had a Drover. And a Galta. <laughs> okay, so Noxious Grasp. Well. that That's a Legion's End right there. That's what we call the Legion's End. <laughs> Player's End. All right, so pretty good showing. We, we got really lucky to beat the Vampires the second time. We lost to Vampires the first time. Does make me want another Legion's End in the sideboard. I did take it out for that other Blood Sun, thinking that maybe the Clarions would be enough, but no, I think we want another Legion's End in here. Um, I'm not sure really where to fit it in, though. I, I do want the three Blood Suns. I mean, I guess maybe over the third Clarion. No, Clarions are still pretty good. I think against the Control decks, we want, like, Command the Dread Horde. Chandra's very good against Control and against Nexus. Um, Gideons are good against control. Like these are all, all our control stuff. Duress is against you know, obviously we want duresses against control, Nexus, Scape Shift, all that kind of stuff. So I don't really have room for another Legion's End. I could play. I could play two Legion's End main and not play Deafening Clarion main. Nice. Nice. LOL. With a sub. Thank you so much for that support there. I appreciate that. Our third sub of the day.
yeah, the model black deck's definitely competitive enough. It is, it is really cool. Um, yeah, it's it's competitive enough. All right, I think one thing I'd want to change though, I think I'd want a second embodiment of Agonies actually, maybe over an Aurelia. Maybe over Shalai? Probably over Aurelia. This card was, was actually really good for us. And figured it out. Let's get let's get another Legion's End. Let's get another Legion's End over Bishop of Wings. Bishop of Wings is just not a very isn't like that great of a card. Yeah, that's that's the card to take out. We should just take out Bishop of Wings completely, get another Legion's End, and then get another like removal spell type card in here. Sorens were kind of always awesome. Maybe we play another Soren. I kind of like that, especially with getting the embodiment in here. You know, so get another three drop instead of a four drop. Yeah, what if we do that? That looks pretty good. I like how that looks. Yeah, Soren's kind of always awesome. Cool. Let's try that. But there we go. There's there's the update there for Kali and friends. Um, yeah, so far, so good on our Rank Up Sunday stream. Um, yeah, so is Kali... Like, you know, again, this is not like one of the best decks in the format. Don't take this and think that you're just going to run over people. And we were pretty fortunate with our 4-1 record. Uh, just like last time we played it, we were 5-0, but we were also pretty fortunate with that record too. But this is still a, a playable deck. You know, this is a playable Mardu deck with Kalia. Um, is it perfect? No. But if you want to if you want to play Kalia and, um, you know, enjoy this card, that's that's really sweet. This is a pretty good deck, solid. That's a, if that's a that's the rating I'd give it from. You know, if I, if I had to give it something from like a one to ten scale, I'd say it's solid. So there we go. All right, so that's Kali and friends. So if you're watching this video later on YouTube, I uh, hope you enjoyed it, and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe buttons over there. Um, but that's it here for Kali and friends. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.